Planar magnetic headphones have a very unique sound signature. They're easy to fall in love with. It's tough to find a good one. It's really tough to find a good one under $500. Well, this headphone has earned a reputation for being just that. I finally got my hands on one. Let's throw it on the test bench and see if it's worth its salt. Let's take a deep dive with the Hi Feynman Sundera. All right, guys, today we are taking a look at the Hi Feynman Sundera. Inside the box here, we get um, just a standard box with an insert for the headphones. It has this nice material in here to protect the headphones. It certainly does a good job of that. It feels nice, but it does feel very cheap. You could pull that right out and uh, your box would be pretty much worthless. It's a very cheaply made box, which is fine. Just know that it's not a value add of any kind with these headphones. So the cable is basically very similar to the Hi Feynman HE6 SE. It's got like a rubber type material feel to it. Feels like something that belongs in a dentist office. It's nice that it's removable and they are clearly marked right and left, so I'll give them that, but it's a little too short, which is unfortunate because this is by no means or measure a portable headphone. You know, it comes with a quarter inch adapter, but it's at a right angle, which I don't really understand, but I don't have a huge problem with. My bigger problem with the cable is, is like this one, for example, hung over a door for a solid 24 hours. And this, this was the good, this is what came of that. So it's, it's an awful cable. If you're gonna own these headphones, you will want a different one. Here are the headphones themselves. They have the newer style Hi Feynman headband, which clamps pretty good, has a decent spring to it. Uh, the clamping force may bother some folks just because the cup articulation is pretty poor. You get good swivel this way, but no give horizontally. So. They wear, regardless of that, they do wear fine. I feel like they're a comfortable headphone. I don't have much of a problem with it. And the other thing worth mentioning is the sizing mechanism. It does tend to uh, chip and wear, which is unfortunate, but you look here, real stiff. Where is it, the metal? Anyway, uh, the other thing worth noting is, of course, the pads. I apologize for the overexposure, but I really wanted you to see the inside here. They do have some dampening over the driver there. You can see the pads come oddly misshapen. I mean, they're just not uniform. Doesn't feel like very good quality control. They're comfortable. I like the foam inside them, but my issue here is it actually translates to sound and we'll get into that a little bit. But if you look at them, they're just oddly misshapen all the way throughout and they're not perfectly symmetrical on both sides. They're, uh, the pads are about as unruly as the cable is, which is really unfortunate because it, it does have some side effects to sound signature. Now, the backs of these are extremely open. They leak sound like crazy, so know that. So if you're hoping to have a headphone that doesn't leak sound, this is not for you. Obviously, that affects portability. So this is by no measure a portable headphone. They are very light. I think they come in at like 370-ish grams, so they wear nicely, which is good. And one of the exciting things about the driver is the driver is actually angled a little bit. So we'll see if that affects sound stage and imaging in any positive way. But really a very basic design, uh, faux leather head strap here. I would say my only summary coming away from the build quality is, is I don't know that it feels like a $350 headphone. The build quality to me doesn't feel any nicer than like the build quality of say the Hi Feynman 4XX from Drop. They feel about the same caliber of build, but we have a significant difference in price. So anyway, let's throw it on the mini DSP ears and see what we get out of that. All right, guys, I think this should be pretty quick here. I'll show you the frequency graphs of the Sundera here. So this is pretty interesting. I show you a lot of different measurements here. These are all the initial measurements I did, and I, I put them all on screen just so you can see two things about the Sundera. One, if you look at the left side of the graph from about 60 hertz down, you see that significant difference in bass roll-off between the measurements. 
This is when I alluded to the quality control of the pads and how they have a lot of irregularities in them. I had in this specific set, just the stock shape of the pad was inherently giving a better seal on one side than other. And it was significant. If you look at the base roll off in general, if you look at the one with a good seal, the repeated measurement there, you're getting about a 5 dB base roll off by the time you get down to the extreme left side of the graph. For the other ear on the same headphone, you're getting about a 10 dB roll off at those same increments. So it's a very significant bass response and extension in the same headphone just due to the stock pads and how they're configured and shaped. Now, I was able to fix a little bit of this by playing with the pad an awful lot, spinning it around, kind of partially taking it off and reseating it, and then I was able to get control of it. So that does help, but it still doesn't change the fact that if you spend three to $350 for a set of headphones, you shouldn't expect this kind of differentiation. The other thing is if you're just looking at the upper registers there, you can see there is a lot of channel variation. So you're getting a lot of differences between how one side of the headphone is responding at the same frequency versus another. Now, the not so bad part of this is that you're your ears will inherently make up for a lot of those discrepancies on their own. So it's the bass quantities that when you start talking a difference of five, six dB in bass extension, and your ears and your brain will struggle to compensate for that. So let's make this a little cleaner to look at here. Here's an average. So that's a good average for you to look at. This is basically when the pads have a good seal, you still see you get, by the time you get down there to the left side of the graph, you do still have a good five to six dB of roll off. So you have some upper register sparkle. I've seen some reports up there uh, about an 8K peak. I don't really measure an 8K peak. All the peaks on my set are really north of 10K. There seems to be some sort of a planar magnetic uh, discrepancy there between 4 and 5K, which is it's notable that on the mini DSB ears, some headphones respond differently around that frequency range. And, Mine seem consistent with other measurements out there in that regard. So not a lot to take away here as far as the sound of the headphone and how it corresponds with the frequency response. It basically translates to you don't have much bass extension and you have a lot of upper spark and treble energy. So let's go ahead and move on. All right, guys. So how does the Sundera sound? They sound great. They're very detailed impressively resolving actually. My pair does show a peak around 10K, so definitely etched, but it's not fatiguing or pain inducing for me. It has that tall, grand audio image that comes with nice planar magnetic drivers. The frequency response is actually reminiscent of Verum 1, but there's more air and sparkle up top. The stage is okay size. It's pretty intimate, similar to like the Sennheiser HD 6XX line. And the imaging is really very good. They have a great musical timbre that comes with planar magnetic headphones. They do leak sound like crazy, as you would expect. Symphony it sounds very lively. Modern pop, rap, they lack sub bass extension. The bass is tight and punchy and controlled, but it just doesn't extend well. The seal is super important, and unfortunately the pads have potential to really hurt the seal here. There is a very slight veil over strong female vocals. They sound really smart, articulate, and musical. I like them, they sound good. The build is kind of another issue. The sliders are terrible. I mean, they are very stiff, and they chip paint on the actual headphone. The pads are not good. Channel matching can be poor and the pads contribute to that and can result in entirely different frequency response. The metal feels cheap. I will say they are nice, light, comfortable, uh, much better than something like that homemade feel of the Verum 1. And don't let the 37 ohm impedance fool, fool you. At 94 decibel sensitivity, they are some power hungry headphones. You feed them a little bit more juice and they respond quite well. They're good for gaming. I like them for music listening and movie watching their own. They're okay. They're more for a, 
a vocal based dialogue heavy type movie and not action because you lack that sub bass response single player gaming again they're fine but they're going to lack that real boom that you might lust after musically you know if you're really into like acoustic guitar and some symphony type stuff maybe some of those categories but if you want that punch that deep punch it's just not there honestly i think for me if i was really after some planar magnetic headphones i would probably actually aim a little lower. I would probably go for the Hi-Fi Men 4XX off of drop, put some money in my pocket to either save for the next big jump or invest in some different equipment to enjoy my experience, you know, a different audio interface, a better microphone, and those sorts of things because in this price bracket, you have better options, dynamic and planar. And unfortunately, to get great planar sound, it feels like you can get your foot in the door at the 4XX or then you can jump to the like the LCD2 Classic and that gap is pretty wide and this is a good candidate to fill that gap, but I feel like most people who are gonna want that planar magnetic sound are also gonna want that extension in the bass and it's just not there. Overall, it's a good headphone, it sounds good, it's something that I do like, I just don't like the value proposition in the price bracket it holds. So hopefully that helps you guys make a decision. As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe so I can keep doing reviews for you. And as always, stay safe out there. Take care.